Parceros, parceros, welcome to the Parceros Take episode. Give me the hand, Ron. So five. five of discussing everything La Selección Colombia, El Profe Queiroz, a beautiful country, and everything else. I am El Parcero Danny. This is Parceros United here with me, El Parcero Ron. Ron, talk to me, man. What's up, man? Today we're bringing you episode five, only two more than the goals Uruguay scored against us <laughs> so today we're going to talk, be talking a little bit about the analysis about that a little just a little bit i don't want to talk too much about it yeah oh, man because we can go on forever we can go on forever actually we about can go that, on that, that loss in uruguay er, in uruguay yeah. against uruguay in, in barranquilla and mm -hmm. how the lineup came out some of the subs the tactical decisions cato's made and then we're going to be previewing ecuador who we play on tuesday this tuesday tomorrow and uh out in um quito in ecuador so let's get to it man what can you tell me about oh, uruguay, man. uruguay man i was going into the game i was very excited about of course seeing how la sección was going to react um especially after the chile game how they reacted in the second half but unfortunately it's as if we were we weren't even playing at home, you know, and I st starting from the, from the warmups, you can, you, you could kind of see their faces. It's like, they were even tired. It, it was like, if the whole home field advantage was going against us, I mean, and I don't know how you feel about <laughs> they, that. They came, out, they came out looking, looking tired, man. Yeah. It was, it was like rough. literally from, from, from minute one, like sluggish, no idea what they're doing. Like just kind of like touch. The touch was awful. Just kind of like down. Heads down, the mood wasn't, it just wasn't there. And uh, you can see that Uruguay completely off the bat, they they knew the game plan and they can sense that, man. When you talk about teams like Uruguay, they have that experience, that jerarquia that we always talk about with the players and just the way they play as a team. Yeah, you can't show like any weakness. And I feel that that was pretty much what happened the whole game uh they pressed us really well they're very all their lines were organized they stretched us out and they stretch in and they, they were they very com they were compacted in the middle they didn't give yeah. us any breathing room in the middle and it showed i mean their their game plan was to mark hamas the whole game mark hamas out of the match and then you know uh press up high because i knowing that um Damison wasn't going to play Mm -hmm. Jerry not very not having a good moment in his club in Everton, and so I mean they knew how to supo aprovechar las oportunidades, no? They they knew how to take advantage mm -hmm. of the few opportunities they had. They had three and they scored three goals. That's and what I, they, I, don't, that's I don't what I don't I don't I don't remember uh, another result in recent history that has been as embarrassing as this one. Oh, it was probably the the previous 3-0 against Uruguay, <laughs> literally. But that was you know away. Um, with Peckerman, because people say that Peckerman, that wouldn't happen against with if Peckerman was involved. Well, it actually did happen when Peckerman was a coach it was against Uruguay as well, but over there. Um, would you merit Uruguay's performance or would you say it was due to our self inflicted uh, mistakes? I think it was our, our self inflicted mistakes. mistakes. Kato's came out. <laughs> like for like, the the lineup didn't make any sense when it came out. When I saw Cuadrado in the right in in right back. Mm -hmm. When you call up two uh two right backs, no? Mm -hmm. You call up uh Muñoz and Orejuela mm -hmm. and you play and you take Cuadrado out of the midfield who's such a pivotal piece in that in that three man midfield and, and on the creative side and then you play three defensive midfielders. It just didn't make sense. It, and then it, and then I said like I said before, I thought Luis Diaz should start because uh, he can combine better Muriel. Muriel, same story as Chile. He didn't play well. He he couldn't. He didn't see enough of the ball. You know, he's maybe he's playing out of position because he's not. He's more of a striker than he is a winger. But yeah, he's a nine yeah. more than a winger. I agree. I agree. Uh, it showed the importance of 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 what what Cuadrado brings to the to to this team in the middle. Um, 
early on. I mean, seriously, like even even I, I wish even in the second half he like once you saw Muriel was non-existent. I wish he would have pushed him up at least put uh, put Cuadrado on the wing, put up top, you know, yeah, as a winger. I was saying that I, full I think, back. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. After the first goal, towards the thirtieth minute, that's you know on the thirty-fifth minute he made adjustments. He brought out. He noticed. Okay. Three, we're going two defensively, similar to that England. It had that England, uh, Colombia game in the you know what I mean? defensive when, midfielders. Well, you went too too defensive, and he pulls Barrios. Um, do you think that, was, that right. was a move? Yeah. Do you think that was a move? Well, I mean, Luis, Luis Diaz had to start from the beginning, but if that was the right move at the right time, I mean, Luis Diaz came in and we looked more threatening initially. In that la those last uh, like ten fifteen minutes of the match or the first half, um, yeah, I mean, we, I we, think we should. I, I, we definitely needed to pull out a a, a defensive uh, midfielder. I I give I give if if any I give Kato's that that um that point of of reading the game and adjusting of trying to make something happen uh, early on. Something, you know, I was like, because, you know, he started thinking, who's who's injured? Is Muriel injured? Is somebody injured? What's going on? So, because I thought he would put Muriel right off the back because uh, Muriel was non-existent. I don't, think, I, I don't even give any merit to Kato's on this match, man. Even with I'll, the I'll subs. Give I'll give him to that because there's something that we didn't, see, we didn't see from Peckerman before. Peckerman didn't make subs until the 75th, We're not talking about Peckerman, though. We're I'm talking just about saying. Kato's. I'm just saying. Exactly. And I gave him that merit from that adjustment because even like, as you said, we looked more threatening. threatening at, uh, it, towards the end of that first half, right? Isn't that right. what you just said? But we didn't so, score. Cool. We, we didn't yeah, score. we didn't score no, at all. It didn't happen. We, we looked it threatening, but that, that's the whole story of Colombia. The whole match. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah. So we. Okay. So that's the first half. So we can say we end, we ended that first half. Uh, one zero based on that uh, mistake. Second half. So. Second half. Okay. Boom. Uh, with, with pulling Barrios, still, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Lucho goes on the left side, Muriel goes on the right, James is able to move around in the middle. Still, I believe Uruguay adjust. We're not able to move the ball around as we should. At the same time, I still think our players are making elementary mistakes, rec league soccer. We could barely hold the ball. We could, like, our passes are awful. Holding the ball way too long, James. Yeah, there's, there still wasn't, that. there still wasn't any urgency from our end. But, Muriel was not, but what, why is that? Is that because the team didn't understand Kato's plan, or is it just because everyone had an off day? At, just happened to have the off day at the same time. I think everyone had an off day. I can. How can you blame Kato's for a bad pass or holding the ball too long? Because James, James had a pass. James had an outlet. James didn't have to hold the ball. I was screaming at the at the TV, like, "Yo, get get rid of it," because he he could have passed it back. He could have passed it to the right. He was literally holding the ball, trying to make something trying to make something happen. In my opinion, it didn't work out. You're playing against an experienced team. It's more than it's more than um, than Kato's. I can't I can't blame Kato's too much. In my opinion, even though he even said when a team loses, he took he took the blame for it. When a team loses, it's the coach's fault. He tried to make adjustments and didn't go. It didn't go away. What I didn't understand is Morelos is a nine, and he took out Muriel and put another nine on the wing. That didn't make sense. And then you, I mean, with that, you lose like any, any like football in the middle. Like there's mm -hmm. no, you don't. Uh, Colombia really like gave up the idea of playing to anything. I think at that point it was just in the minute 65 when Morelos came in. It was more about like sending long balls up and see if they can come up with something at that point because there was, was no the, idea there was not, no identity on the field yeah, nothing. there was no and then uh uh lucho goes on the right side uh Morales was on the left side and yo i forgot I, I don't know what what the left back was called for for uruguay yo he shut us down on that side there was nothing we could do because even then lucho didn't do anything on the, on the on the second half because he was on the right Shut yeah. us down. But it, it goes in hand with um, taking Cuadrado out of that mid. Can't combine with those those players up top. That really 
I mean, uh, it was Bina. Man, he, Bina was. It, you can't make the necessary adjustments when you come out looking like that, man. Like, there are no adjustments to be made when you when you come out with that lineup. Would you come out that mentality? Um, I, I mean, Kato's couldn't have done anything else in that match. I think it's too, when you're playing a team like Uruguay, it's too late, and they go up, and, and everything's going their way. It's too late. There's nothing really you could do. Yeah, that was, that was embarrassing. And I mean, Kato's think he's on the hot seat. I mean, that dude, that's that's uh, uh, no, nah. that's we lost three zero against Algeria. That we looked flat, embarrassing. I don't know. We can't have these off days where we we just. I I, switch I agree, but I I still don't think he's on the hot seat. In my opinion, I wouldn't put him on the on the hot seat yet. Um, we still got to see what happens with Ecuador, to 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 see kind of like what happens. But I don't. I think defensively, he we we have looked better. Um, apart from this game, if you look at statistically defensively, we have we have looked better. Um, I mean. Yeah, I mean, even look at even look at the PK, man. The PK was, come on, man, come on, man. That was oh, soft. It, it, that PK it was hella soft. And it I, was, man, I warned it in it in, in the in the previous episode that we said, um, Jason Murillo wasn't have a good has hasn't had a good time in in Spain recently. Jerry Mina, and look, they they cost us that that game, though. No? It did. It did. Um, also, speaking of Jerry Mina, he picked up that red. Means he's he's gonna miss. We're gonna miss him against Ecuador. Hopefully, right, we're gonna miss him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He didn't play against. He didn't play against Algeria. Okay, but he played. It was Davinson and Murillo. It was it was Davinson and Murillo. Eh? I think I think we will, we will we, I think we will miss him. Uh, like you said, Uruguay had three chances and they buried all three. Yeah. And and even then and and you you have to note on on that result of the three zero. The the three zero came from Cato's trying to go all in and pulling uh Mateus. Was it Mateus or Lerma? He pulled he pulled pulling uh, uh, Mateus, no? Mateus, yeah. Pulling Mateus and bringing Cardona to go more of like on full attack, right? So you got, I mean, if he wanted to keep it 2 0, he would have kept it 2 0 and it wouldn't look as bad. But no, he decided to kind of go all in, right? Sure. Yeah, so I, it was, it, it's one of those things like, yeah, it was a 3 0 thing, but the goal came directly because uh, we pulled that extra defender, you know, that guy covering the middle. So you got to take note on that. So even, even though, yeah, you, you, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I you can't, you, yeah. you, so. Yeah, that's all. I'm, like, I think we missed it. In conclusion, I think we'll miss Jeffy. I think we we'll do. I think we will miss him. And he, in my opinion, it's going to be Boron y Cuentanuea going into Ecuador. I yeah, think. I hope so. Back to the tactical I'm, board and reset, hit the reset switch on, mm-hmm. on whatever happened or whatever and they had planned for Uruguay. But I don't think he's on the hot seat. No. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. And then, so speaking of Ecuador, they beat. Bolivia. They beat Bolivia in La Paz. And it was a crazy game because first uh, Bolivia went up, then Ecuador, then Bolivia, and then Ecuador came back in the closing minutes of the match. Um, It's a good result for them, but we can see that they have holes in in their defense. They get goals scored on. Um, Chile scored two on them. Uh, Bolivia scored two just recently. Uruguay. Ah, sí, sí, Uruguay. Uruguay, 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 Uruguay scored them. Argentina beat uh, Argentina, scored on them. Um, it's a, it, play. I mean, playing La Paz is different. I mean, you know, you have no legs, you have no lungs. Uh, but I gave it to them. I mean, I gave it to them. Uh, they controlled the whole game. Uh, Bolivia, their specialist playing in in that altitude. So, um, still, I get. You know, I feel like they they could even. I mean, they had opportunities in the first half to go to go up even more, but um, they're, uh, they're dangerous. Uh, they have, they have the a lot of coach. the uh, combination of young uh, coming up players that I, most of the lineup plays in, or most of their starting eleven play in in Ecuador. 
in their domestic league. Um, but they have that combination of young players coming up, like Moises Caicedo, who plays in uh, Independiente del Valle, defensive oh, midfielder who can kill that. But who has, an, who has an who has an eye for a pass and an eye for a goal. Yo, he's killing that midfield, bro. But in, and then they're just they they they're feeding into the system. They're believing into the system, and oh man, they're fast, bro. They're fast. Yeah, and then they have that combination with. Uh, more experienced players like Angel Mena. Mena. Who's that? Angel and Leon. Yeah, and, and Leon. He's a he's a killer. Yeah, but what what do you expect from them? What kind of what can we expect from Ecuador as far as playing style? Ecuador, they're gonna want to implement whatever they've been implementing the past couple of match days, um, especially playing at home. It's they're play we play in Quito, so it's a it's a it's high altitude. They know yeah. their ground really well. And it's they, difficult to uh, get a result there. They literally build runways on both wings, bro. That, that's the best <laughs> way I could explain it. Literally, with uh, the Ver uh, Caicedo yeah. uh, Estupinan on the left side, yo, they got a runway. And on the right side, Angel, Angel, Angelo Preciado. Yeah. Bro, they are, you see them bomb. I saw them yo, and on the – on the, I think their first two goals, or first, or maybe all three, and against yeah. Bolivia, you saw them just cut inverted runs in, inside yeah. through the midfield, and then whatever they they finish their business in there. Yeah, they dangerous. They dangerous. Um, as far as us, as far as Colombia, that's when that I mean a four two three works for that finding those little holes to to, to exploit that. Ahmed's being Ahmed has to show up. You know, I, I feel like this is one of those games that. Okay, man. Hamid has to show up, and and Cuadrado too. How can like, how can we involve Cuadrado in in this game more? Do we keep him on the right side, or do you think Kados Kados brings in Orejuela or Dani Munoz to okay like accommodate Cuadrado in the middle? Yeah, I think this would be a good match for Dani Munoz. He's been playing a uh, like we mentioned before in a line of th- he's been playing right center back in a line of three, but he's mm-hmm. also played right back in in Nacional. He's a player that knows the game really well he can read the game so he's more defensive than maybe say um orejuela but he has so i think he would be a, a good choice to start in right back for, with those uh, speedy wingers that just to that, be more cautious right yeah um so so you so now we're talking about him starting so to finish up the, the back line uh mojica davison and morillo uh, yeah, Damison definitely has to play. Uh, I don't know. I said between Murillo and Lukumi, I, I would think Lukumi is having a good moment in in Genk with uh, Dani Munoz. So he's in form. Maybe I hope Kato's gives him the baton, gives him the trust because I think he can he can pull it off. Because uh, Murillo didn't have a, a good game and or hasn't had had, had I didn't, I didn't hasn't had it, a good. Uh, I didn't think apart from apart from the PK. Which is still questionable. I didn't think Murillo did that. I mean, it wasn't Murillo's fault. You know, I didn't, I didn't think Murillo did that bad in the back. You know, I, it wasn't. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, like how we're. It wasn't as noticeable as Jerry's mistake, in my opinion. So I, I would go with Murillo. I still will go with Murillo and and Davinson. Davinson. Mm-hmm. But like you mentioned before, that the Algeria game. But at, at the Algeria game, it was Oscar Murillo, not. Ah, uh, see, see, see. Yeah, it was Oscar Murillo, not this one. Um, what not about Jason. uh, not Jason? How about uh, in the middle? In the middle, Cuadrado. Cuadrado has. I mean, Cuadrado for sure. Cuadrado uh, Barrios, Barrios. Lerma. Lerma. But, but see, Lerma, Lerma was a bit off this game as well. That's what I'm saying. Like, I would like to see a lot of players. Maybe Campuzano. Maybe you would you would, you would do a you want a reset, a complete reset. Lerma was not on his. The, he wasn't, but you see what I'm saying. So what is that? Kato, how is that Kato's fault? That's a lot of players not being on their day. If it's not, yeah, then you got to switch them up, mix it up, mix up the players who you're playing in midfield. The midfield the last game had no no function. We played three three defensive midfields. No. Mm-hmm. No cohesion, no football, nothing to be played in the middle, and we still got scored on three times. Why not play a different player? Play Campusano, who can maybe um, 
help out more in the attack in the build up. No, so. I, no, I, no, yeah, yeah. And, and I and I'm with you, but you know, just going back to what to what you said before. So how can we play Kato's just Kato's on all this game if a lot of your players weren't informed? Let him out played amazingly against Chile, but because he this, he decided he's the one that decided to play these players. He's the one that decided to play. Jerry, who decided to play three defensive midfielders to play. Uh, yeah, I'll agree with that. I, I'm, I'm, I agree with that. But a lot of, I'm just saying, a lot of players weren't on, their, on form. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, but he I still mean, I'm, decided I'm to with play you. them. <laughs> I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you on that. But I'll no say, I'll play Lerma. I will go with Lerma. I will give him, he played against Chile. Hopefully, look, man, we learned from our mistake. Was it the Barranquilla Heat? At what point do we say the Barranquilla Heat might not be it for our selection, especially since soccer is evolving the same way like in La Paz, Bolivia used to have, you know, used to take over, which is somewhat still making it harder. But look, teams like Ecuador are coming out with, with wins. So at what point do we need to switch that off? That's another. That's for another episode. That's for another episode. I'll, I'll leave you guys on that. What do you guys think on that? Comment below. Hit us up on Twitter, Instagram. Let us know what you think. At what point? We should play so in that, in that <laughs> But anyways, um, I still go with Lerma. I still go with Lerma Barrios, Lerma Barrios, Cuadrado. I think Cuadrado is that cohesiveness that, that will bring uh, uh, our midfield, um, that will get our, our team going. Um, James on the right? Uh, yeah, James needs to show up, man. He hasn't showed up at all um, against Venezuela. He didn't, he didn't really show up. Even though, because everyone else around him played a spectacular game, so it wasn't really noticed. Yeah. But then against Chile, he it, it was noticed that he wasn't informed or he wasn't feeling it. And then this last game, he was just completely marked out of the game, completely disappeared. Mm -hmm. So, James really he needs to get going, man. We need him. Yep. To, James. To inform and give his little green assault in the in the tack. Uh, so it's safe to say that Lucho will be on the left. Yeah, from, our, from from what we from what we predict, but even then, Lucho, it's and it's one of the things that everyone has been uh, commenting on, on on things that he should improve consistency. Like, can we get all that from Lucho for a full ninety? He goes in hard, but tends to kind of fade away from from the action towards the latter part of the game. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's still young. He's got lots learned, but he's still running that aspect. I think he he came on really strong last last game. He did, he did. And I mean, literally, he came on, and then that first ball he touched was a combination play that ended up in uh, like complicating the goal, goalkeeper, mm -hmm. Uruguayo, Uruguayo goalkeeper. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, man, we're, what do you think? We get three points, a point. We get any points out of? Oh, the one at if do yeah, the one up up front. Oh. This one's one up front. Yeah. You know what? Dude, well, but we didn't touch on this, but we missed so much leadership up top. It, well, maybe in this whole camp, man. Maybe that that was the thing that's missing. You think like that? I I mean I mentioned it uh, preview previewing the the Venezuela match when we reviewed the the call ups or that that convocatoria. Uh, that that this team needs those leaders like Falcao. I remember you said you were like, no, but it's time to give it the baton to a new player. I was like, no, mm -hmm. man, these guys need cohesion. They need a leader to look up to. And um, I think Falcao was that guy. Maybe he was missing this last match. I don't know. What do you think? I, uh, I, I think we miss Fal uh, Cuadrado's leadership in the middle more than Falcao up top. Um, and the reason why I say that is because, yeah, we stopped the one fighting, but. We also mentioned how in the, in the previous match, how Golin was going to get Jimenez back so they can pair in the middle. And that showed that, – that was a huge improvement on Uruguay's part, having those two twin towers in the middle. And you could see it, man. You, could, you saw it. It was – they were physical. They were, they, were, they were on his back, you know, all yeah. game. And they were, they were strong, man, in the air and just physically, like – like on the ground, you could see like the one was 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 battling. It was like a rugby match for him. So with with that, I don't know how effective Falcao would have been in this past game. I think we missing more of of that cohesiveness in in the middle. Uh, and I think by the time 
Cardona, which I liked him seeing minutes, by the time he came in, it was a little too late. Yeah. It was a little too late. They were too, they had, the lines were back, you know, we're down 2-0. Um, two things could happen, either La Remontada or we got vaccinated. I think we were, we, were clo- we were closer to conceding the fourth than scoring our first mm-hmm. in that game. Yeah. I agree. So I think we're I think we're we're missing more of that leadership in the in the mid, in my opinion. And I think that comes Cuadrado is is that it's a it, he's he's a pillar in in this four three three, and we're slowly solely dependent on on his play in the middle. Yeah. Um, so with what, that being said, with that being said, let me ask you a question. Ah, uh, I think the three points are doable. I think that the three points are very doable because of Ecuador's style of play. They're not going to sit back. They're going to try to come out and attack. And I think it's those, that type of play is very, it's very favorable for, uh, for Cato's, yeah. mm-hmm, for, for Cato's 4-3-3. We saw um, it against it, Venezuela, but, no? Hmm? We saw it against Venezuela. We saw it against Venezuela, yeah. It, it's not going to be at the type of game. We shouldn't be the type of game that we'll see, like, against – against Chile or Uruguay that, that should be sitting back and kind of playing to our mistakes. Ecuador is not – they're not about that. They're going to try to go tu a tu con Queiroz. Uh, Unless, if for some reason, they see something they like and they decide to let Colombia just take control and just sit back and counter, that's another story. But I don't know if Ecuador is as uh, – tactically organized as you know the Chilean and Uruguayan in that aspect yeah I agree if Ecuador comes out you know like you said attacking I mean we've seen it before at Queiroz uh playing teams that that come out to attack him um I mean what comes to mind is Argentina last year in the Copa mm-hmm. America mm-hmm. 2-0 there uh tactically that game was amazing for Queiroz because uh he he knew how to exploit the spaces Argentina mm, exactly because they're you know they they it's Argentina they want to play mm-hmm. their game um, if Ecuador, Ecuador I think might will do this will want to do the same at home unless um, uh, who, uh, Ecuador's uh, Ecuador's coach the ex Boca what's his name yeah his name anyways yeah. if he, if he if he sees uh, how much Alfaro, we struggle, Alfaro, 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 Gustavo, Alfaro. Sí, Gustavo Alfaro. Eso. Eh, yeah, he might see something he liked in in um, Uruguay's organized uh, defensive structure. So I don't know. It was, it's gonna but be it's not fun. something that. You, but see, that type of game plan, gameplay is not something that you just switch and do it right yeah, off the yeah. bat. You know what I mean? That's something like I mean, that's their bread and butter. That's how Uruguay has always played. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they still go out. I think I, I feel like they have they have a different walk to them. I think Ecuador has a lot of confidence, um, especially in going into Bol- Bolivia um, and scoring so much and, and, and scoring four on Uruguay over there. Um, so they're gonna go out to do like a like a un tiroteo. You know, they're gonna go out to kind of just, just shoot their way in and and see how Colombia responds. Um, this is a great test for Cato's defense which that's why i say i i miss i think we'll miss jerry because in this type of type of play davinson and jerry have done very well they've they've been very solid against teams like this um but hopefully uh murillo and davinson can can also be solid mm-hmm. and uh i have i have a good feeling about this i, I think i think i think it's going to do well like i said we, we play well against teams like this against ecuador yeah. And we've had the upper hand. This is a this is more of a classico. This is a classico for us. Ecuador is our direct competitor. So we'll it should be a good game. I think I have a good feeling about this. I think we'll turn it back around. I think we'll turn it back around. It is, yeah. They just need to hit the reset. Stop playing quite out as right back when you call up two other right Play backs. Play in the middle. <laughs> exactly. Play yo, you, you, there's a reason why you call two right backs. Give them the opportunity and uh put quite out in the middle. And that should be the, the missing piece, hopefully, that should get us going. We'll hopefully, we'll see a better game from James. Uh, Lucho going in. Having, having, Lucho's going to have to come back. 
seeing that their wing is going to attack, but hopefully it gives us space for him to exploit. It's the type of game for Lucho as well. So he's going he's gonna to have a lot of room. And in that same way, Muriel, if, he, if, 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 if Gatos were to start Muriel, this is a perfect game for Muriel. There's a lot of space for Muriel to take over. I like Muriel as a sub. Best no, and me too. Uh, me too. It's a good problem to have. I, I like both of them. Yeah. With, the, with that being said, guys, I think this will be all for today. Let us know what you guys think, how the adjustments are going to be made. Um, is it on Kato's? Um, Do you think it's like a reset? Do you think it will work out against Ecuador? Maybe give us some score predictions. You guys think we, you think we'll take the W? I think we're going to lose. Remember to guys? subscribe, like the video, and uh, follow us on all social media platforms. En, al, en todo lado, en todo lado. Sí, that's true. Los parceros, con el parcero Dani. El parcero Ron. Parceros United, follow us. Bye.